Hello everybody, I'm Aidan O'Gogan. Uh, I'm in my second year of my PhD at Trinity College Dublin. And my project focuses on using CT scanning and 3D modelling on tetrapods that are preserved in the Carboniferous Coal Seams of Ireland. Uh, when it comes to Carboniferous tetrapods, uh, their evolutionary relationships aren't fully understood, uh, particularly when it comes to the Lys amphibians, which are your modern amphibians, like frogs and newts. And there's actually two major groups that it is taught that they've that there's kind of a debate on which they originate from. The first of these groups are the Temnospondyls. They had their heyday in the Carboniferous and were the most diverse tetrapod at that time. Um, they finally died out sometime in the late Cretaceous or early Cretaceous actually. And they're always they've been associated with the origination of the amphibians based on a lot, especially on their ribs and on their cranial morphology. They have a lot of developmental uh, strategies, uh, including some taxa that have larval stages, which, uh, like tadpoles and frogs, then went through a metamorphic phase to become a fully adult, full adult. The second of these uh, groups that are associated with the modern list amphibians are a group of lepidospondyls, and it's a group within these that I'll be focusing on. Uh, these are a subclass of small tetrapods. A lot of them have elongated bodies and a lot of uh, clades of independently evolved reduced limbs. Uh, and again, my, uh, some recent phylogenetic work has linked uh, the origination of list amphibians with the lepidospondyls, putting the lepidospondyls on the stem of modern amphibians. And uh, a lot of the associations between these are usually based on their uh, vertebrate mor morphology. And one group in particular, the yeastopods, which we'll be looking at, are uh, suggested to uh, be particularly really related to the amphibians. So finally, what is an anisopod? Well, as I said, they're limbless, but they still retain part of their, uh, their shoulder girdle, which is, which is seen up here. Uh, they have an elongated body from uh, adding extra vertebrate to their body. And there's about eight genera, most, most of them are monogeneric, more basal yeastopods have kind of broad snouts uh, and characterized by tightly packed gastrae on their ventral surface and diamond shaped osteoderms on their dorsal and lateral surfaces. Whereas more derived and usually geochronologically later yeastopods uh, have narrower uh, skulls, have widely spaced gastrae, and lack osteoderms. And a few works associated with the origination of the Sicilians which are these modern limbless amphibians here. They kind of look a bit like worms. Uh, and it's been taught that these directly evolved from them, despite a huge kind of gap in their uh, fossil record. So the, the good way to link ev evolutionary relationships is to look at how animals develop. Uh, and of course, because the lepidospondyls aren't alive, we can't take them and watch how they grow. But we can look at different size fossils to see if they have, like the bundles and modern uh, amphibians, have a kind of metamorphic phase. So to do this, I took four uh, Eastopod specimens of varying size, brought them to the University of Bristol where I scanned them using a CT scanner. Uh, I then produced 3D models using spheres, and because there was a lot of noise in the CT scans, I used the masking function of spheres to highlight the bones which I was particularly interested in. The specimens I used are from the Jaro assemblage, which is in southeast Ireland. Uh, it's a, it was thought that the Jaro assemblage was deposited in an oxbow lake, which tra uh, trapped a uh, wide diversity of tetrapods. And it's also historically important because it's here that the first yeastopods were actually discovered. And in the mid 1800s, two uh, different species were described the more basal and larger Ophidurpidon brown riggy here and the more uh, derived Dolichosoma emersoni, which is also smaller. Uh, these pictures kind of, they, it looks like you can see a lot of detail on them, but when you actually look at the fossils, they're not as impressive. Some of them are just mere hollows uh, and impressions of bones up here, and then others tend to be quite covered in sediment, and you can't actually make out a huge amount of detail here. You can just see that this is a skull here. So this is why we had to go bring them to the CT scanner, and we were doubtful if it would actually work, but thankfully it did. Uh, and the first thing we found is that two of the specimens we, that we scanned were actually were of Dolichosoma emersoni, and two were of Ophiderpinum. And the first thing we found in Dolichosoma is that it had a, a whole range of Ophiderpinum characters, including some osteoderms on its dorsal and uh, ventral surfaces, and also some 
tightly packed gastrally. So therefore, this means that Dolichosoma is actually just an Ophidurpidon, and there's actually only one specimen in Eastapod from the Jarrow instead of the uh, previously reported two. So when we look at a more mature and the uh, fullest growing uh, Ophidurpidon, we see that it has a well-developed upper jaw here, well-developed mandible. It has a palate with teeth on it, which is kind of cool because this is the first occurrence of this within Eastapods. And it also has a well-developed vertebrate with uh, rib facets here and slightly articulated ribs going up to the very first uh, vertebrate or the atlas vertebrate. And also the shoulder girl is well developed here. When we look at it, uh, one key thing to note is that the quadrate, which is the bone that articulates the upper jaw with the lower jaw, is also well developed in these specimens. When we look at a more younger and intermediate uh, specimen, if we remove part of the upper jaw, we see that part of the quadrate is actually not uh, present, and a lot of the upper jaw hasn't ossified. Now, this compares with the lower jaw, which is well developed by this stage. And if we look at the rest of the actual vertebrate skeleton, we see that the vertebrae themselves have uh, ossified, and rib facets have developed, even though they're slightly disarticulated. But ribs only begin, begin to appear possibly on this vertebrate or this vertebrate has become slightly disarticulated and moved down here. But we don't get vertebrae, or we don't get ribs uh, uh, attached with the first three vertebrae. Um, it's unlikely if they've been removed uh, due to disarticulation because the specimen itself is uh, still preserved its osteoderms and gastrally, so there hasn't actually been much disarticulation. And if you look further down the vertebrate or along the backbone here and in the specimen, you can see that there's ribs here. So it's more likely that ribs have not yet uh, developed in this specimen. So what that tells us is that um, at intermediate stages, not all of the bones have yet ossified. So the, the intermediate yeast pod is here, and the more mature one is here. And this suggests that these are actually direct developers, and that as they grew throughout their life and got bigger, they were developing bones. This is the opposite case in modern amphibians. Although modern amphibians have a wide variety of developmental strategies, it is a larval, like a tadpole stage, is considered to be um, the primitive condition, and um, seen in salamanders here where some bones will ossify in the tadpole form, but then there will be a rapid rate of uh, growth in the metamorphic form where all other, um, all other bones will ossify. And then by the adult stage, where it's still growing larger, all bones are fully formed by that stage. So based on the development of eustopods, it is likely that they are actually not related to the list amphibians, as some people have said. And it's possibly that it's more likely that list amphibians originate from the Tamlis bundles. Yeah. And that's my so Jaro assemblage contains only one species of eustopod despite actually having two. At intermediate growth stages, Ophidurpidon still does not contain all the bones of an adult, so it's still developing. Um, and this again suggests an affinity possibly with the amniotes uh, and not uh, with the amniotes stem and not with the list amphibians. So thank you for listening, and I'd like to thank my. Thank you.